when you, when you entertain Him, when you experience Him, when you understand Him, that's when life changes. Oh God, we thank you for your presence, for this moment to be here for you, God. To be here for in your name, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for bringing us peace, for, for bringing us a love like no other. May we understand, may we, may we come to you, may we connect with you, may we have a relationship with you, Jesus. May we live for you, God. We thank you, Jesus. We worship you and we praise you, God. We lift you up upon high, Lord Jesus. May we shout your name, Lord God, to the roof, Lord God, to the skies, Lord Jesus. We thank you for this moment, Lord God. We rejoice, Lord Jesus, in your, because you bring joy. Even when we don't see you, you are there. But even when we don't understand, you are there, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, God. May you bless every heart here today, Lord Jesus. Bless every soul, every mind, Lord God. May you come and touch every soul, and may you bring a peace to every heart, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus. May you bless the sermon today, Lord God. May we open up our hearts to you, Jesus, today, Lord God. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Church, you guys can be seated. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here today. My name is Mark. If you don't know me, it's good to see new faces. It's good to see old faces. It's a pleasure to be up here today. I just want to share a couple things with you. Uh, I'll be doing you guys' announcements. There's normally a piece of paper around you. It lets you know about what's going on in these events. And we also have an app as well. Feel free to go on that. It has even more information that you'll ever need. And if you have any questions, feel free to come up to me. I would be happy to tell you anything that you'd love to know. So there's a couple things going on. So September's over. <laughs> October is on the way. And we like to have a thing. Uh, we, ha we like to... Uh, we have a saying, we have a saying. We don't like to do life alone. Christianity is a team sport, right? We do life together, and so we have things going on. So Fridays, young adults, Mondays, teens, it's happening once a month now, and Fridays is every Friday. Feel free, young adults, teens, if you know anybody, reach out to me or to any leader in this church, I'm sure they'll be, they'll be happy to let you know. Wednesdays, prayers in the morning and in the evening, 7 a.m. and 7 p.m., really good time to just connect with Jesus. That's what we do on a weekly basis. We connect. We grow together as a community, as a family, right? And it's a pleasure to do so, to connect with Jesus. That's what we do on a weekly basis. And so, like I said, September's over. October's on the way. October, we're having a couple things going on. DNA is happening next week and Women's Fellowship. It's happening every month. So this week's, I mean this month, excuse me, this month's is going to be a painting and fellowship with the women. Feel free to put that on your calendar as well as worship night, October 20th. There's going to be a lot of slides here. Sorry, Paul, if I'm going really quick. Um, but yeah, worship night, October 20th. Put that on your calendar. It's a, it's like prayer. See, they're excited. They're excited. I'm excited. It's a, it's like, it's like prayer on Wednesdays, but like, Ten times, tenfold. It's so good. And, uh, and it's a pleasure to announce it. That's October for you. And then there's, a, there's things going on every month. We have, we have it planned out. Thanksgiving, Christmas, put that on your calendar. It's on the pieces of paper. Feel free. Put them on your calendar. Come back again. Bring a loved one. It's good to see you guys here, and it's good to fellowship. So I can't thank you guys enough for your time and for your patience. We can't do any of this without your generosity, without your kind hearts. You can give by giving in that orange box or 84321. You can text to give as well. It's really easy. It's really convenient. Thank you guys for your time. I'd like to welcome up Roman. He's going to be t preaching today. Thank you. <laughs> I did not listen to what Mark was saying. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Oh, man. I was telling him earlier, I hate those microphones that, you know, that go in your ear. And then I grab this microphone and I can't use it either. You know, great, great. Um, yeah. Well, friends, I am uh, very happy to see you. And um, it is good to be in the house of the Lord. And I'm not talking about this building. I'm talking about you, the church. You are God's temple. You're God's people, 
and uh, you're the blessing of God, and I, I'm so happy to be here with you. If you, um, you have a neighbor by you, give them some love. Say hello, say hi, give a high five, uh, a pound. I don't know what kind of sign you want to do. Just be like, what's up, homie? Um, it's, good, it's good to be in God's house. Um, All right, you done high fiving? <laughs> okay. Well, friends, um, I get the pleasure and the blessing to give you a word today. And um, we're going to be talking about God's family. We're going to be talking about the family. And I want to pray with you because I am so nervous. I Did I just lose this microphone? No, it's good again. Gosh, microphones, man. Jeez. Oh, higher up. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Let's pray together. Lord, we come together with you, um, knowing that you've brought us a word that's supposed to give us revelation, that's going to speak into our hearts. And I pray, God, that you bring your atmosphere, you bring your blessing, you bring your truth, and you speak directly to us, Lord. I pray you would cut deep, Lord. I pray, God Almighty, that you would reveal something special, that you would change our hearts. I pray someone would receive you today. Someone would receive your comfort, your blessing, Lord. Someone would receive your grace and mercy, receive you directly as their Lord and Savior. I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, that we would get your revelation and your power today in your name, Lord. We thank you and we glorify you. Amen. So there is a bond that God created, and it is so great, and that's the family. He started it off in Genesis, and that's when it, bega it, that's when it began, the family, this awesome bond. And whether you have a family that's a normal family, like husband, wife, or you have a different kind of family, you have God's family, you have a family here, God created it. God designed it. He put it together, and it doesn't matter if you're blood-related or if it's your brother and sister, it's a family in Christ. God designed it. He made it. He put it together. Um, have you guys ever, um, you guys ever watched a certain show that has like a family in it? It's like a cool show, even like reality TV shows or or this kind of stuff. There's so many of them. I'm trying to like think of one. There's a ton of them, and they're all usually not very good. Um, but when, when I was growing up as a kid, my favorite show, and this one was like top for me, and probably nobody here cares about it, but it was this show about a family that built motorcycles. And it was like the show for me. Oh, yeah. And um, they built like these really sweet choppers. And if you know what a chopper is, it has like ridiculous handlebars, and it's completely custom. And when I mean custom, that means the person built it from like from wheel to wheel, top to bottom by themselves. It was my favorite show. It was so dysfunctional. They would fight all the time because building something custom or even building something with your family is really hard. <laughs> it's, it's difficult as it gets. And, but at the end, this whole dysfunctional family thing, the end product was this beautiful bike. It was gorgeous. It like sparkled. It shined in the sun. And when people saw it, they were just awestruck. This is what a dysfunctional family brought out. And um, it was entertaining. <laughs> it was really entertaining seeing all of this. And this is how most of us live. And I, I realize in my life, this is kind of how it is. We have this kind of dysfunctional side to us. We're trying to make things work. We're trying to build something together. We're trying to make somehow this life thing work. And... Um, I, um, in my life, and when I, when I look at all this, and all this dysfunction, I really hope someone who was filming it, you know, there's things that happen in my life with my kids that I'm like, man, looking at this reality show and my show, I wish somebody was filming us, because, you know, when you're filming something, it's not the same thing, you're filming your kid doing something, you're like, ah, it's kind of like an actor, if someone was filming it next to you on accident, you're like, dude, this is, this is crazy, I can't believe this actually happened, um, but I have, uh, I have three kids, and in all this dysfunction and all this amazing thing we call life, I pray for them a certain way. 
I pray for them because I see what God is doing in their lives. And I see what, he's, what he has in them. And my first kid, um, Matthew, my oldest, I pray for his creativity. I pray for his creative side. And um, why I say creative is because he's constantly running around the house, taking stuff without asking, hiding it in his room. He builds like a weird little terrarium in his room. You know what a terrarium is. There's, there's, um, there's, it's supposed to be for reptiles, but there's no animals in our house, you know? It's kind of like a fish tank for animals, but there's nothing there. So he, like, gets a cardboard box, puts a bunch of stuff in there. And then there's an even, even more creative thing he always asks me. And he, he does this maybe ten times a day. He asks me, Dad, when are you going to buy me a talking parrot? And... I just thank the Lord for him, and I bless him, and I pray he, he doesn't stop this creative side that, is he, that he has, that God would just keep moving it forward, keep blessing him. My second child, um, I pray for his energy. I pray for his energy. He has this, like, almost like an like a energizer bunny kind of energy. Have you ever seen it? It's like clapping, 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 and it does not stop. It does not stop. And you never feel it. I, this is a life lesson. You never feel that with soda, like Coca-Cola. <laughs> it's, it's funny, but it's, it's the truth, <laughs> you know. And he has this, it's like he's sweating constantly. He's jumping off the walls. And I, I pray for him because this is what God gave him. He gave him this, like, this, this fire inside that he's constantly just, he can't sit still. And my third kid, which is, I pray for him the most because he's really little. <laughs> and um, <coughs> he's, our, he's our most um, affectionate kid. He gets upset really easily. And we pray for him about this affection that he's passionate. He's the kind of child that when, you, when he comes to kiss you, he kind of smacks you first and then kisses you because he wants to have a reason to do it, you know? And I'm, I'm sure he'll grow out of that. But this is my family. This is this dysfunction I pray about and, and this life that we live. And I know that you pray for your kids and you'll, you pray for your family, your friends. And you pray for this dysfunction. You pray for this thing that we have in life that we call life. And God has given it to us. Don't put it aside. Pray about it. Speak about it in your life. Tell God about it because God has blessed you with this for a reason. He's done this in your life for a reason. Um, I'm not going to pray about my other seven kids. I'm just kidding. I don't, I don't have any other kids yet. But uh, those are the three that I've been blessed with. Thank you, Ina. I love her, uh, my wife. And um, family, this is our first point. Family is designed by God. It's designed by God. And uh, the big question here is, what does a healthy family, or even greater, what does a godly family look like? And I, I want to start off with the design, with the designer, and I'm not talking about the artist. I don't want to, that's not the person I'm, I'm talking about, the designer, the original God Almighty who designed us. And how do we figure this out? Can we get a formula? Like, could I get the 11 herbs and spices? Could I get, you know, that, that perfect sandwich or that perfect meal? Could I figure out the formula, the ingredients? Um, is there a secret? Can I tell you guys a secret? Are you guys going to tell everybody? Then I can't tell you. <laughs> no, there's no secret. Let me tell you again. There is no secret to God's family. It is a simple truth that God has stated. It is open and it's clear. You're God's creation and he's your creator. He's designed you to live in a family. He's designed you to be a family, to be God's family, to be your own personal family. He's designed you that way. And there's no way around it. There's no way to crisscross around it. He made you that way. God's creation, he made it good. Now, we, we sometimes walk around and we see people do really dumb stuff. Like, you know, on our phones, we watch like the fail, and we're like, God, I don't know how you did this. I don't know how you made this person, you know. I don't know how you made this happen, but God created us good. He created us good in his name. <laughs> Thank you so much, Paul. 
Um, this is the first time I'm drinking water this month. So, <laughs> thank you. No, it's not. <laughs> it's, I wish you brought me a coffee. That's what I'm. No. Yeah, wishes are for, for Disneyland, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> um, where was I? God's. So, God <laughs> made us a family and He made it good. And God created the woman, the helper, the advocate. For the man, he created it good. He gave them children. He made that good. And to quote a great theologian, Dominic Toretto, I don't have friends. I have family. Wow, so profound. Wow. Uh, that's about it. You guys can go home. <laughs> no, I'm just messing with, with you. Um, no, God designed the family, and if you haven't heard this before, and maybe it'll open your eyes, you were made in God's image. Now, this isn't just like God created you, like he just picked you up and created you to look like this. No, why you're so beautiful, you're so handsome, you look so good, is because God created you like him. He created you like him. He made you look like his image, like he was, and if we read in Genesis, he says our image, and that's the image of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's another sermon, but I want to put that out there, that God made you in his image, in his wholeness, in his fullness. Me, male and female, he created them, and he told them to be fruitful, to increase in number. Praise the Lord Jesus. And he told them to rule over the animals. He gave them all of the, all of the plants to eat, everything for food. God saw what he had made, and he said it was very good. He said it was very good. God knew that what was good and what was not good. And just like us in our lives, we know what's good for us. We know what's bad for us. God chose you as the good. He chose you and your family and that whole design as a good thing for us to pursue, to live, and to have and it's a big blessing. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 2. I want to kind of backtrack a little bit and give this better understanding. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. The Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make him a helper suited or suitable for him. And God made woman the advocate or the, the helper. And it's not just a helper like oh, this, this person's always beside me and I just ask them what to do. He made the woman next to him as an advocate, someone that you would run to for help, someone that's alongside you to help you. Um, and that's the deeper understanding that God gives. And I want to enlighten some people. God made, through the word, God made, in verse 22, he made the woman from the rib. He made her from the side of the man. And by the way, I want to, I want to remind you, and I want, to, I want this to be clear, and if you learn anything today, please learn this. Uh, verse, verse 7, God made the man from the ground, and verse 22, he made the woman from the rib. Remember, ladies, um, when you are arguing with your man next time, he's made from dirt, and um, have mercy on him, please. <laughs> and men, when you're losing this so-called argument, you're just losing it outright, Remember, she's made of better things than you, and um, just give in. <laughs> no. Um, stand your ground on God's word, brothers and sisters. Seek the answer together. And from that, verse 24, this is why man leaves his father and mother and is united to become one flesh with his wife. Praise the Lord. They're taken together. God made them together. He separated them from father and mother and they live their own life. They choose their own way. God makes a family. And he did this all in seven days. Man, what can we do in seven days, right? And it's hard to, the whole work week just takes all my time. God made this in seven days. He said it was good. And we come back to this great question again. What's a godly family? Has anything really changed? God established this family. He made them. And what about sin? Sin kind of deludes it, right? 
Sin hits the family so hard. Did it break it apart? It can. It can, but the godly design and the godly family sticks together. Sticks together. And um, you know family's messy. We know that. We know family's broken. We know that it's dysfunctional. A lot of times in life, we gotta we got to stop and assess things, and sometimes family's irregular. It's no dad, no mom. Grandparents are taking care of the kids. It can get worse sometimes. Sometimes it's an orphan. Sometimes it's just you and your friends. Sometimes it's just the family that adopted you, and that's your family. It's the people that, that God gave you. No matter, no matter what God gives you, no matter what it is, the family that God puts together, it stays together. It sticks. It works. And we look at Adam and Eve, and first Eve grabbed the fruit, then Adam, then Adam ate it, and, and this whole mess and this whole broken, dysfunctional thing hits the family. And I, I wonder what happened during this. Was, was, uh, was Adam like telling Eve, Are you, Eve, go pack your bags. Like, it's time for you to go. It's time for you to go, Eve. Or was, um, maybe we see this in movies sometimes, Adam, you know, wakes up in the middle of the night and his, I don't know, his camel's packed or whatever he rode on back then, a tiger. I don't even know. His bag is packed and he wakes up Eve in the night. He's like, I'm so sorry, sweetheart. I got to leave you. You know, no, this is not how it was. Um, she, she gave the fruit to him. Doesn't really ma- make a difference who gave the fruit to who. If, if Adam was the, was the great, the teacher who was supposed to teach Eve and she was the helper, Adam is the, probably the one who screwed it up, you know. Um, neither one of them left each other. God kept them together. Even in the dysfunction, even in the brokenness and in the sin, God kept them together. He said, you're going to, you together will be with this dysfunction the family sticks together. The family keeps going. Genesis chapter 3, verse 12. The woman you put here with me gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it, and all the blame happened. All this stuff is going on. God told them what their life will be after. He told them. He laid it out. He said, you're going to have hardship. It's going to be difficult. Adam, you're going to have to work hard. Eve giving birth is going to be so difficult. This life is going to be hard on you. I'm going to end your life at a certain time. You know what? This life is so dysfunctional. Praise the Lord that he ended it at a certain time. That he gave us a certain amount of years because we need heaven. We need that place to go to. We need a place for rest to be with the Lord. Now, God sent them out. He sent them together. He clothed them. The fundamental truth stayed. And the future was set in. The family was built, and even in the dysfunction, it all stayed together. Whatever you come from, wherever the brokenness is in your life, before you were broken, you were designed. Before any of it happened, God gave you a beginning, and he gave you an ending, and I'm going to tell you right now, your beginning is good, and your ending is good. And the dysfunction in the middle is is how you're going to live your life But I'm going to tell you right now, God is looking forward to being with you. God is looking forward to the family to come together. He's looking forward to the blessings. Your beginning is good and your end is going to be glorious, brothers and sisters. It's going to be awesome. Um, Putting all this together, putting the thoughts together, Jesus, Jesus needs to be in the middle of your family. Jesus needs to be that rock, that cornerstone that keeps your house up. He needs to be the one that keeps your dysfunction and everything that's going on in your life together. And I'm going to tell you right now what what works for me the most, and this is from me, is praying to God about that. It's praying to God about all the things that happen in my life, all that's going on and giving it to him. Jesus keeps it together. He keeps it going. He makes our life better. Uh, Point two, the godly family, the godly family. Jesus had a messy beginning. I'm telling you that a messy person, the person that had a mess in his beginning is the person you should keep in the middle of your life. You should keep him as the Lord of your life. Um, His mom, if you, you know this already, 
was a virgin when she got married, and she was having a baby. And uh, Joseph, man, Joseph was a good guy. <laughs> He's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dump her secretly. I'm going to make sure that um, I'm going to quietly do this so nothing happens so she won't get stoned. He was a good person, you know. And he, he out of all of the odds of all of this mess, he decided to believe in God's plan, stick together, and make it work. And make it work. And he kept it going. Uh, local rulers, after they, they stayed together, wanted to kill him. This is a, anybody after you guys? I don't know if you should tell me. Anybody after you guys trying to kill you? I know we have a mess in our lives. But um, Jesus had people literally trying to kill him. And this is the first family that Jesus started out with. This is what he had. This is what was the beginning. Going from this, there's an amazing story in Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. It's an amazing story about Jesus, his mom, his uh, earthly father, and how and what they were doing together. So Luke chapter 2, uh, they go to a town for a census, and they're, um, it's like a festival uh, of Passover. They go into town, and for three days they're having a good time, and they lose Jesus. And they didn't lose him after three days. Have you guys ever lost your kid? I've lost my kid. I'm, I'm talking from a father's perspective. I've lost him in Chuck E. Cheese. That's the worst place. That's like losing him in the mall, you know? And it wasn't like they lost him at the third day. They lost him through the, th the three days. They're like, oh, we're just having fun with the Passover stuff, and we just lost Jesus, you know? That's not good. <laughs> That's not good. So Joseph and Mary weren't the, weren't the best parents just like we're not the best parents, but God used them and he worked in their lives. Um, so after three days, they weren't even worried about it. They were already heading home. I, I hope none of you have already been home and then you realize your kid is gone, but they're already heading home and they realize that Jesus is nowhere. He's nowhere. And they're running through all their family, you know, there's some people that they know and they're looking for Jesus. So they end up going back to Jerusalem. And this is like a, a picture of of their family, the two, mother, father, the good parents, looking for their son, Jesus. Looking for Jesus. These are good parents. They're looking for their son. They want to find him. And they went everywhere, and they found him in the temple. They found him in, like, the most, like, irregular place. They found him in the temple. This is what they told him. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxi anxiously searching for you. Why are you searching for me, he said. Why are you searching for me? Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? This is a crazy picture, right? It's ironic. It's like a, it's an interesting picture. The family is searching for Jesus, and Jesus is searching for the father. Isn't that weird? Interesting, right? The more I look at this, the more I understand this, we need to search for Jesus. We need to search for Christ Jesus, and we will receive the Father. We'll receive this greater understanding that we need in this life. And seeing how good, they were good parents. They looked for their son. They wanted to find him. And... I want to tell you guys more and more this point I, I can't get across more if Jesus is in the center if the father's in the center of your family they'll stay together they'll stay together whatever you have the the church that you have the family that you have they'll stay together in Christ Jesus uh, here's a here's a simple teaching for for husbands wives uh, children and fathers and I, and I want to just bless this into your life and I just want to speak the truth to you so that you can hear this and understand. And I hope God will, will open it up to you. Verse 18, wives, understand and support your husbands by submitting to them in the ways that honor the master. Second part, husbands, go, go all out in your love for your wives. Don't take advantage of them. 
Verse 20, children, do what your parents tell you. The delights the master, this delights the master to no end. Parents, don't come down too hard on your children so you won't crush their spirits. These are simple truths from God, simple understanding from God. I hope that you can, you can hear, you can understand it. I want to give a focus to, to fathers. Don't antagonize, don't anger your children so they, will become, they won't become discouraged. This is important. This is a big deal. This is, this is something in life that your children are different from you. They grew up in a different generation. And it's so easy to be angry. It's so easy, and I've, I've come to realize this. It's so easy to misunderstand and, and not know what's going on. Take a breath. Take your time. Speak to your children. Take that time during the day. Put the work in. Take that time dur- during the day to know them. Um, we're going to keep going. In Scripture, chapter, chapter um, 1 of Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 5, anyone who does not provide for his own, and especially for their own household, has denied the faith and is worse than an, than an unbeliever. Man, that's, those are hard words to hear. If you can't provide for your own house, and we're not only talking about the material. We're not talking about the bread on your table is one of the things that God gives, and he gives it easy. He gives it to all of us. But providing for your children, being there for them, speaking to them, preaching the truth into their lives, that is the most important thing you could do for them. To be in a good relationship with your kids, to be friends with them, to be the parent and the father in their lives. And it might be harsh, but you got to put in the work, brothers and sisters. you got to put in the work. You got to put in the time. You may come from this broken, incomplete something. You might come from something that was missing in your life, a family that was missing. Maybe it was never there. God calls us to adoption in, the, in his house. Jesus, Jesus built this for us. He started this for us, and he, he made it simple. Maybe you didn't have a good family growing up. You don't, you don't really know what it is. God calls you to his family. He calls you to his church, to the house of God. And if you didn't have a father in your life, Christ can be your father. Jesus, the father, can be, your, can be that for you. He can be that person for you. Jesus can be the savior that you needed in your life. He can be that for you. And um, he gave us a new opportunity something new that we can do. Um, And looking at our spiritual family, we can be reconciled to God. We can be made new in Jesus. I want to read from Galatians chapter 4. I'm not going to read all the verses, but I'll read in Galatians chapter 4. My time is almost up. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4 and 5. And I hope that this would speak directly to you But when the fullness of time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, so that he might redeem you through those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons and daughters. That you may receive an adoption as sons and daughters. I'm going to tell you right now, there is no illegitimate children. There might be illegitimate parents. They don't want their kid. They don't want something like that. There's no illegitimate children. We're called into sonship, into adoption in Christ Jesus as sons and daughters of his. Amen. Amen. Jesus, Jesus called us as as his family. And if you remember, he invited every kind of person. He invited fishermen, tax collectors, And he invited a ton of sinners, a ton of sinners. You might think you're the worst. He invited the worst of the worst, the worst kind of people you could think of. He invited them to be his church, to be his family. And he calls us to do the exact same thing, brothers and sisters. He called us to invite all kinds of people, our friends, our family, to be a part of his house, to be part of his children. I want us to stand up on our feet. And I want to wrap this up. With you all together, we're going to go into prayer. Pursue a godly family, brothers and sisters. Put in the work. Put in the time. This life 
it doesn't work as simply as waking up in the morning, going to work, and, and family's just okay. You got to put in the work, brothers and sisters. You have to speak to your children, speak to your friends. You have to pursue a relationship with your family. You have to go into it and spending time with your kids, spending time and inviting your people into God's kingdom is what we're called for. We're called to disciple. We're called to disciple our family and God's family. God's word, his principle, they're made simple. There's my alarm too to wrap up. Your friends, your family, they need, they need you healthy. They need you spiritually healthy. They need you to be filled with Christ, to be filled with his word. They need you to sit down with God and lay it all out. Lay out this dysfunction, lay out this mess and tell him to work on you and work in your life. He needs that. And they need that from you. They need you. And we need Jesus from the start and to the end. We need him to work on us. Brothers and sisters, be intentional. Be intentional. It's not about the routine. It's not about meeting up every week, hitting people over the head with the word of God. It doesn't work. You need that relationship with your kids. You need that relationship with your with your family, with your friends. We pray, Lord Jesus Christ, we come together in your name, Lord. We come together in your name, Jesus, and we pray your word, your glory, and your power, and your presence. You would take your sword, Jesus, and you would cut deep into our lives, Lord. We pray, Lord Jesus, you would cut to the core, Lord. You would make yourself known in us. You would fire up, God, our souls. You would speak directly to us in your name, Jesus, in your name.
to invite you guys to receive the Father, to receive Jesus as your Savior, and to receive the Holy Spirit as your helper, as the advocate in your life. It's as easy as saying, I'm a sinner, you're a Savior. I give you my sin, I give you my life, Jesus. I pray you would set me free. I pray you would put me on the path, Lord, of salvation. You would put me on the path, Lord Jesus Christ, to eternal life. I pray, I pray in your name, Jesus, that they would receive this good news, Lord, in your name. In your name. It's as easy as that to start on the right path to God. I pray in your name, Lord, that we would take having our family, having God's church, we would take it seriously, Lord. We would take it into consideration, God, that we're living in this life and we need you, Lord. We need you to work in us and to work in them, Jesus. We pray, God, that you would fill us with the Holy Spirit. You would fill us with your blessings. You would fill us with your truth, Jesus. You would set us, Lord Jesus Christ, apart from this world, Lord. I pray, God, we need you. Our friends, our sons, our daughters, Lord Jesus Christ, our family, they need you, Lord. They need you, Jesus. We pray in your name, God Almighty, do more. Do your good work in us, Lord God. Do your good work in us, Jesus. We pray in your name. We glorify you. We honor you. We praise you, Jesus. And we thank you so much, Lord. We thank you, Lord, in your name, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, whatever someone's going through today, Lord, there's a mess in this life, and sometimes we call it way worse, God. We know what's going on. We know, God, it's not working. I pray, Jesus Christ, whoever today, God, they're, they're at a roadblock in their life. I've been there. Jesus was there. Whatever roadblock you're in front of right now that's hindering you, maybe it's sin. Maybe it's the devil. Maybe the schemes that are just working against you. We pray in your name, Jesus, and by the power of Jesus, we break them. We break them with your power, Lord. We pray, Lord Jesus Christ, that you work. You go ahead of them, Lord. You do your great things, Jesus. Maybe it's as simple as getting on your knees, telling God about it, praying about it. Maybe God needs to do the super, supernatural. God, you do it. You work in these people's lives. You work in their hearts, Jesus. You do your great work in your name, Jesus. We pray, God, as your house, as your people, Lord. We pray as your church, as your family, God. We pray, Lord Jesus Christ, we're looking towards you, Lord. And we pray in your name that you bless us, that you lead us, that you give us that good relationship with you and with each other, God. We pray that you bless us, God, and you do more. You do your great work in your name, Jesus. We praise you. We honor you, and we thank you in your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for coming to church. We bless you. Um, have some fellowship. Talk to each other.